Do you like me? Circle yes or no. Remember those notes that would get sent around the classroom in grade school? Well, that type of binary question and data is exactly what we'll be discussing in this video. In this video, we will discuss the binomial distribution, how to find binomial probabilities using the formula and using Excel, how to find the mean and standard deviation of a binomial distribution, and how to determine whether an observation is unusual using the 2.5 standard deviations from the mean rule. Oof, we have a lot to cover here, so let's get started. Kara asks 10 random peers whether or not they like her. And we're going to assume that we know that actually 85% of her peers do like her. But Kara doesn't know that. So, guess what? The number of people that respond yes to Kara is binomially distributed. Pretty cool. Though, how did I know that? And more importantly, what does that mean? Basically, to be binomially distributed, we need three things. First, we need the number of trials to be fixed. What to the what? What does that mean? It means that Kara is going to ask 10 people. She isn't going to change that on us. She's decided to ask 10 people, and that's it. Second, each trial is independent. This relates to the fact that Kara needs to pick random people. These people can't chat with each other before they all respond and all decide to pick yes or all decide to pick no based on what they decide as a group. Rather, they all need to make their choices independently. Lastly, the probability of success is fixed which means that our knowledge that 85% of Kara's peers liking Kara isn't going to change during the course of this experiment. Okay, so we have a binomial distribution. Great. Why should you care? The reason that we care about the binomial distribution is that once you recognize that an outcome is binomially distributed, you can use this formula here to count the probabilities of different outcomes. Okay, so let's do just that. Let's find the probability that exactly three peers say yes to Kara. Remember, she asked 10 people, and n is the number of trials, so here n equals 10. Also, we are assuming that we know that 85% of her peers do like her, and p is the probability of success, so here P equals 0.85. Okay, so this is the probability distribution function. We can use this to find the probability that x equals 3. Let's plug in n equals 10, x equals 3, p is 0.85, x is 3, 1 minus 0.85, 10 minus 3. Okay, this 10 over 3, this isn't a fraction, it's a combination. It's 10 choose 3. A lot of calculators can solve this for you, or you can watch my video in the description about how to find combinations, but this equals 120 times 0.85 to the third power times 0.15 to the seventh power. Okay, you can, you can plug this into your calculator and you'll get 0 0.0001. It's very unlikely that exactly three peers will say yes to Kara because she's so popular. It's, it's actually more likely that more people will say yes to her. Because remember, 85% of the people uh, do like her. Okay, so finding the probability that exactly three peers will say yes to Kara by hand wasn't too bad, but it can be even easier if we use Excel. So let's go to Excel. Type equals, then write binome dist dot dist, open parentheses, and you see down here they're kind of giving you a hint of what they want you to enter. So num s is the number of successes. If I'm trying to find the probability that x is 3, that'd be 3 successes. Number of trials, we asked 10 people. Probability of success, 0.85. And then cumulative. Cumulative means, am I trying to find the probability that x is less than or equal to some number? That would be true, cumulative. Or 
or am I trying to find the probability that x is exactly equal to a number, in which case cumulative would be false. So I'll write false, and then I'll press enter, and it'll tell me the probability. 0. 0.0001, and then it didn't round as much as I rounded, so it, it gives a few additional decimals. But basically you get the same answer if you use Excel versus calculating by hand. Suppose I want to construct a table with the complete binomial distribution for Kara's responses. This means I need to create a table with x and the probability of x. x can take the values 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, all the way until 10. Because remember, x is the number of people that respond yes to Kara, and she's asking 10 people. So 0 people could say yes, 1 person, 2 people, 3, 4, 5, all the way to 10. Okay, so now to find all these probabilities, if we were to do it by hand using the probability distribution function, it could take a really long time. So it's probably best for us to go over to Excel and find all these probabilities. Okay, so here I am in Excel, and the first thing I'm gonna do is basically create the skeleton for my table. So I'll write x, the probability of x, and then all the different values x can take. Okay, so once you have the skeleton of your table ready, double click in the first cell, equals by gnome.dst, open parentheses, and the number of successes, you just want to click on the cell directly above the cell that you're typing in. Okay, number of trials is 10, probability of success is 0.85, and for all of these, we're going to write false for cumulative, because we're finding exact probabilities. Press enter. Okay, then take this and drag that little bottom square all the way over. Okay, and there you go. This is our probability distribution table. The reason why you're seeing these weird numbers over here is because that's really close to zero. Basically, uh, this is scientific notation for numbers that are very, very small. It's nice to have the complete probability distribution table when you're trying to find more complex probabilities, such as the probability that at least four peers respond yes to Kara. To find the probability that x is at least four, or in other words, four or more, I just need to add up all the probabilities where x is four or more. If I add up all those probabilities, I'll get 0 0.9999. Okay, but what if I wanted to solve this problem and I didn't want to find the complete probability table first? I could have used the complement. Remember, the complement is everything that is not at least 4. So then the probability that x is at least 4 would be 1 minus the probability of the complement, or 1 minus the probability that x is 3 or less. The probability that x is 3 or less is a cumulative probability, which is nice because Excel will calculate cumulative probabilities for us. Cumulative probabilities must say less than or equal to some number. So let's go to Excel and solve this problem. Okay, so let's use Excel to find the probability that x is less than or equal to 3. So type enter, then type binome dist, open parentheses, the number of successes here will type 3, the number of trials is always 10, the number, the probability of success is always 0.85, and then now we're going to say yes to cumulative. Cumulative means that x is less than, always less than, or equal to some number. Okay, So we are going to say true to cumulative. Press enter, and there's the cumulative probability. So remember that the probability that x was greater than or equal to 4 was going to be 1 minus this complement. So let's go ahead and figure it out using Excel. So I'll type equal 1 minus, and then I'm just going to press on this cell, and then press enter. 
Okay, great. And that's what you're seeing, that 0.999. If you were to round that, there'd be another 9. Okay, so I've summarized what I did in Excel on this slide, so you can pause the video and take a closer look if you're interested. All right, so moving on. Suppose now I want to find the average number of peers that will respond yes to Kara. You may also see this question phrased as the number of peers that Kara can expect to say yes to her. Mean and expected value are the same thing. And for the binomial distribution, we have this nice formula here. The mean equals n times p. n is 10 and p is 0.85, so the mean is 8.5. I know we can't have a fractional person, though it's okay to leave the mean as a fraction. This just means that if we were to take multiple samples of 10 people, on average, those samples would have 8.5 people respond yes. Okay, so what about finding the standard deviation for the number of people that respond yes to Kara? The binomial distribution has this nice formula here for us to use. n is 10, p is 0.85, and q well, q is 1 minus p, uh, so that's 1 minus 0.85, which is 0.15. You multiply those together, and you get 1.275. When you take the square root, you get our answer. The standard deviation is 1.129. Suppose Kara asks 10 people and exactly 4 say yes to her. Would that be an unusual result for her survey? Like, did she just happen to find a bad sample, or what? To answer this question, we're going to use the 2.5 standard deviations from the mean rule, which states that all observations 2.5 standard deviations below the mean and above the mean are usual. So let's start by calculating 2.5 standard deviations. Here, that is 2.5 times 1.129, which is the standard deviation that we just calculated, and we get 2.8225. Next, subtract 2.8225 from the mean and add 2.8225 to the mean, and you will get the usual range, which is between 5.68 and 11.32. So yes, 4, which is down here, is outside the usual range. So yes, Kara got a bad sample. If she were to redo her survey, it would be very likely that she would have an observation within the usual range.